Okay, good evening everyone from the Death Valley region of southeastern California. My name is Mike Jerry and uh, I've got some, mm, some cool astronomy objects to look at tonight. Uh, as I said in my, my uh, email or my contact that I put out, we're going to be doing the uh, June Cloudy Nights Observers Challenge. And uh, so, got some nice objects put together by a gentleman named Pat Utah on the group, and uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. In the meantime, uh, I should start off the same way I normally do, which is to turn the test pattern off and show you my setup. And uh, as always, I'm using for a telescope the uh, six-inch imaging Newtonian. It's an f4, a focal ratio of four, uh, which means it's a, a little bit faster. It's ideal for imaging. And uh, this up here is the focuser, or where the eyepiece, or in my case, the camera goes, so that we can see what the scope is seeing. And it all rides on a Celestron Evolution uh, Altaz mount here that is then attached to this wedge down here and uh, this keeps it pointed right at the celestial north pole uh, the celestial pole so that uh, the scope is rotating with the sky as the sky peels around and uh, allows us to track the objects and use our cameras to take longer exposures so that we get some brighter images of these really dim objects so, tonight, as I put in my thing, we will be using the color camera because we've got a number of uh, <coughs> number of cool objects to look at that are in color. So, let's make sure here that I am no, not you. Okay. And I can't tell if it looks like I'm broadcasting, but yeah, okay, it looks like I'm getting out okay. Audio stream's current bit rate is lower than recommended. Well, it looks like I'm broadcasting the correct audio, so, um, hmm. I'm not sure if this, <laughs> sometimes some of the warnings I get are, are nebulous and uh, <clears throat> I can't tell. Hey Al, thanks for stopping by. Uh, shoot me a message here in the chat let me know if you can hear me okay because right now I can't tell if people are hearing me. Although now the error message went away so, okay, good, thanks Al. Um, I you know the, <laughs> the error message went away so. Okay, I guess we're all good. So anyway, I assume you guys heard all about the about my setup. It's the same one I always have, but uh, it's good to go over it just for any newcomers who are who are here tonight. And of course, it's all riding on my high-tech uh, cinder block pier in my backyard. And so that's what's bringing us the images tonight. So next, let's go to okay. So the cloudy nights observers challenge for tonight. So the first thing we're going to do is, I guess what's first up is M5, which is a great globular cluster. So let's go find M5 here. M5. Uh, you. All right. Let's go zip over to it. a pretty big bright cluster. Uh, let's see. Okay, now I didn't put my sequence for next target. So we can set our exposure and everything right so that we can see it when we get there. Oh, and there it is, dead center. Okay. Well, we can just start imaging on that. But, like always, because it is a globular cluster, and it has a lot of really bright stars in it, we are not going to want to do a 60 second exposure. In fact, we're going to cut that down quite a bit. And yeah, there we go. 
cut that down quite a bit and okay first thing I need to do is get rid of this then I need to get rid of well let's not get rid of it yet let's adjust it first yeah that sounds like a good idea now we can get well and now, now while we're in here let's do our enhancements twink twink so that everything is a little bit sharper okay and here is our globular cluster M5, a nice big bright cluster there. Yes, Al, the heat wave is definitely coming here. Yeah, they're saying by mid next week we'll probably be close to 120 here. So I imagine you'll be you'll be pretty similar over there to the southeast of us. It's gonna be uh, gonna be a cooker. So let's see what Pat wrote about M5. Uh, discovered by Gottfried Kirch and his wife Maria Marguerite in 1702, and then Charles Messier found it in 1764. William Herschel resolved it in the in the individual stars. He counted 200 100 of them with his 40 foot reflector telescope which was built in 1789. He used a 48-inch diameter primary mirror with a 40-foot long focal length, hence his name, 40-foot. It was the largest telescope in the world for 50 years. And I'll bet you his view of it was not nearly as good as what I get, <laughs> what we can get right now in our backyards with stuff you can buy at the optical shop or online. The uh, technology that we have today is absolutely amazing. I mean, astronomers of 20 years ago would have killed for some of the stuff that we can just have as amateurs in our backyards nowadays. Nice bright globular cluster. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about it. We're not going to see a whole lot more exciting about it. Uh, uh, five. Uh, the the picture isn't going to get a whole lot more exciting than that. It's just a really nice glob. Um, binoculars. Hmm. 105 stars in M5 are known to be variable. Wow. It has 105 variable stars. Yeah, it doesn't really say much about it. Well, it doesn't really say much about it, actually. How far away it is or how big it is. Huh. Hmm. So, anyway, M5. And you can see this in dark skies. You can see this naked eye. So, for those of you who might do that, it's at about 140 degrees, or in the southeastern sky, almost almost dead south right now, which is 180. So it's in the southern sky right now, and it's about 45, almost 50 degrees up. So it's in a pretty nice viewing spot right now. And a nice little cluster of galaxies in here. So there's our, where all the galaxies we'd, we've been doing the last few months. This is just off the beaten path a little bit. In fact, we might even have done a couple of these few days ago. It's also called the Rose Cluster. Hmm. Well, neat little glob. Okay. That works. Let's go to the next one. And I'm going to back off on this. And what is our next target? M27, the Dumbbell Nebula. This is a pretty cool one. Okay, so M27. What happened? M27. Uh, ooh, that's still very, very low. Yeah, we're going to have to wait on that one. That's still just barely above the horizon for me right now, so we will have to do that later. It's a nice, it's a nice uh, planetary nebula. You can see it's a good size and it's a nice brightness, but we're going to have to wait on that one a bit. 
so we'll come back to that. Let's see where M64 is right now. That's better. That's up nice and high. Okay, let's go do M64. Oh yeah, there we go, landed dead center. Okay, this is a nice little galaxy. It's our only galaxy for the night. It's M64. Black eye galaxy. And where is the, here. Yeah, it's got a band of dark dust, so you can just see kind of a little band. So this is the picture that he got. And let's see what we can get here. M64. Okay, let's see what Wikipedia has to say about anything interesting it has to say about the Black Eye Galaxy. Relatively isolated spiral galaxy. It's 17 million light years away, so it's pretty close to us, relatively speaking. One of our local group of galaxies. <laughs> we've got a we've got a satellite bombing through. Not surprising. We've got to adjust our histogram for a very different. We were doing seven seconds, I think, seven or eight seconds for the. Uh, the glob, and so this is going to be a very different thing. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's probably a little too bright still. Back it off. You can start to see the dust and the dark dust lane right there, the upper part of the, the eye there. Actually, that first. Hmm. I wish I had cleared it before that came in. We've got a pretty streaky. We got a pretty streaky sub exposure there on that first sub exposure. Hmm. It's calling it good, but obviously it's quite streaked in here. <laughs> So it's 17 million light years away. Discovered by Edward Piggott in March of 1779. And also by Johann Bode in April of the same year, as well as Charles Messier the next year. I'm going to clear this and let it let it run again. Got another sub about to pop in here, so hopefully this time we'll get some, yeah, much rounder stars and much more detailed object. So this will this will build a lot better and more accurately. That first sub exposure just streaked a little bit. Um, a dark band of absorbing dust partially in front of the bright nucleus, gave rise to its nickname of the Black-Eyed Galaxy. Oh, excuse me, Black-Eye, Evil-Eye, or Sleeping Beauty Galaxy. Uh, it's well known by amateur astronomers due to its form in small telescopes and visibility across inhabited latitudes. It's inclined 60 degrees to the line of sight. Um, at the distance of this galaxy, it has a linear scale of 65 light years per arc second. Um, da, 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 da. Anything else interesting? Spiral arms are fairly tightly wound. It's a type 2 safer galaxy. Has some radio emissions. Mm. OK, 
counter rotating discs in it. Hmm. It's about 54,000 light years in diameter, or about half of the size of our Milky Way. Let's put on the background music. At least you guys got something to listen to. Besides my yammering. <coughs> yeah, you just got a nice little streak of dark right around the outside here. Now normally in pictures, this is upside down uh, because my Newtonian telescope flips and inverts things, so it's uh, normally that dark part is on the bottom, which again looks a little bit more like a, a black eye. Let's try brightening it up a little bit. See how that lands. That might be a little too bright. That might blow it out. That is a little too bright. Back it off a little there. And in fact, let's also... Mm, color balance looks pretty good. It's not too bad. The Dumbbell Nebula, which we'll be able to see later on tonight, probably near the end, is uh, that's a great that's a great object. Uh, I did image it a couple of times last last fall, so I know I've seen it with uh, probably on one of my live streams from last fall. But eager to see it again. Haven't seen it in a little while. Oh shoot, and I forgot my water. Oh well. Let's zoom in a little bit more here. And I'm in fact going to have to go put a layer on. So you say you're hot and cloudy there, Al. And yeah, we're, we had a cool day today. It was only 90 here today. Breeze stayed pretty cool. Got down into the 50s last night. We'll get down into the 50s again tonight, which is pretty cool for us this time of year. But uh, uh, we're supposed to make up for that in a real big hurry. You know, like you said, heat wave coming. Yeah, by starting tomorrow, it's going to be 100, and then 107, and then 110, and then. A <laughs> And they're saying by Wednesday, Thursday, we could be pushing well over 115. So we had a gorgeous, cool day today, but I don't think it's going to stay that way. We're definitely going to heat up. Got out and got a nice bike ride this morning in the cool air, which is great. <laughs> got to take advantage of that cool air when it's around. Or just be up really, really early. Which, when you live in the desert, is when you get things done in the summertime. 
<clears throat> the Black Eye Galaxy. Getting all kinds of little colored pixels here. Red colored pixels. These are just hot pixels from the camera. Green ones here, green ones here. Little micro dots all over the place. Hot pixels. Seconds plus ten, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's the right dark frame. So normally the darks handle that, but not perfect. And cameras change. Yeah, you're b b yes, you, because you're southeast of us, Al, you're still in the Pineapple Express, you're still in the monsoonal flow down there. But this latest system that moved through, we're actually on the north side of it, so we're in a totally different weather pattern. We're just a few hundred miles apart, but in a completely different weather pattern. It's, it's actually chilly here right now. I'm actually going to have to go in and put another layer or two on. But uh, you're still underneath that, that tropical flow. And uh, so you're in the heat and the humidity. But it will be soon up here as well. It's going to be affecting us all. Yeah, I'm about to hit our tenth minute here. Know that I'm going to be able to clean that up any more than that. If I increase the histogram, I will get much more of the outer soft stuff, but the black eye will get washed out and go away. So, probably don't want to do that. And just darken it up a little bit. We get a little more texture out of it. I think that's about going to do it for the Black Eye Galaxy. Interesting little galaxy. One of our locals. Okay, let's see what's next. Let's see what's next. No, not you. Where'd you go? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so 27 we're going to skip till... Whoops, I don't know what happened there. 27 we're going to skip till later. 16 and 17, Eagle and Swan Nebulas. I wonder if they're up high enough. I wonder if they are up high enough for me to see. Let's, let's see where they are. Uh, I'm, they might. I right now they're they're in the southeastern sky and they're a little bit low. I can just actually pan around to them here. Cause they're gonna be in. They're gonna be in the fun summer stuff. And here is where all this cool stuff is. There's 18. These are all the things that we're going to get to see here over the next few months. All this wonderful stuff. And there's 18, there's 25, there's 23. 
trying to find a dead reckoning. 2021. It's Lagoon and Triffid. I think it's. Yeah. There's 16. Yeah, see, 16 is still. 16 is still below. Still below roof lines for me right now. This challenge may be a little more challenging because, oh yeah, and 17 is even lower. Yeah, these are still pretty darn low. They're t way too low until later tonight. So apparently when Pat did this, he uh, assumed that people were going to be um, up till really late at night. You know, because in a couple of hours this will be up in, an, this will be in a nice space, but for right now this stuff is way too low this early at night. So this stuff will definitely, these are definitely really cool things that we will be looking at over the next few months. Swan and Eagle. Um, they're very nice things, but uh, they're way too low. Way too low for me right now. So we'll have to try and come back to them. I see 1470. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I see 1470. Again, really low. Well, northeastern sky. Wow. Yeah, this this is uh that's you know, it's only like fifteen degrees up. That's in the soup. When it's that low to the horizon, it's in the soup. And there's not much you can do with that. So okay. Sixty five four NGC sixty five forty three. G C sixty five forty three. Oh there we go. Something that's actually up in the sky. Right next to the little dipper. Hmm, this could be a challenge. Let's see what this does. The scope goes over that far. It can sometimes go out of focus. Okay, Cat's Eye Nebula. Or Snail Nebula, or Sunflower Nebula. Let's see. Whoa. Okay, let's put our thing out here. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. These four here are these four here, and it points right to it. So I think it's going to... Oh, actually, I think this is it. Or this is the bright star. Yeah, so I think it's one of these two, probably. The Let's move it over a bit. Move it a little bit more to the middle. That's where it's going to be, right in there. Okay. Whoa, where are you going? That was a bit much. Come on, come back. Come back. Planetary Nebula, which means it is a 
sun entering, a sun not unlike our own, entering its final stages of life. And it uh, blows off its outer layers, but doesn't quite go out. And so as its outer gas layers keep expanding out away from it, it lights them up and forms these interesting nebulae that we see that were originally thought to be planetary type objects way back when, when they were first seen because they are, do have a little bit of color to them. And there obviously weren't stars. So yeah, I think, I think that's when, let's see. I think this is it. Where are you? Uh -huh. Yeah, that one right there. Well, let's see what we can see. Hmm. Boy, there's a that that looks like a galaxy there. Something, some things in here too, but I can't tell what they are yet. Let's see. Clean this up a little bit. It is very bright. Maybe a bit overblown even. Let's try backing off on the histogram stretch a little. See if we can see any detail. And right now it's just kind of a bright, bright ball. In fact, I'm going to take a minute here and go in and grab another layer to put on and uh, grab my water. So I will be right back. Okay, that's better. Hmm, I wonder if we're going to be able to get any detail out of this. Let's try to back it off and stretch even more. And that just makes the whole thing dim. I think that's helping much. Just a bright blob right now. Hmm. Well, what I could try doing, because it's so bright, I may want to start treating this like a star. And perhaps, I just need to, what is the mag on this? Is it 
yeah, see the surface brightness is greater than the overall magnitude. So what I may want to try and do here actually is reduce the exposure. Let's reduce the exposure to 30 seconds. Clear this and start over again. See what it does. It may just be so bright that we just need a lot less exposure to see any of the detail in it. We'll know in a few seconds here. dropping the exposure again to 15. See what that does. The good news is as we get faster and faster, the images will come in faster and faster, so See, so that's what we are. Oh, okay. Okay. I was misunderstanding. So the nebula is actually. Okay, my bad. The nebula is actually all of this around it. This is still the core star. It's still there. This, the faint wispy stuff. Because I can see a little bit of it. Um, in the original images we were doing, but just a little bit, just this brightest section here. Which is probably emitting from both of these stars this little section of gas here um, you could I could I could just barely see it um, in fact I thought it was associated with the other star the neighboring star but it looks like actually it is what's coming off of this star so let's readjust this bring this back. Yeah, see, you're seeing this puff of light right here. And that puff of light right there is this right here. So I don't know that we're going to actually be able to see very much of the nebula itself. Because it's going to be right in here. So we'll let this run for a little bit and see if we can pick up some of the some of that faint wispiness other than this one bright spot it's in here yeah see you can kind of see a little bit of it here and we'll see what happens when we pull in a few more sub exposures see if we can see it in here. It's gonna take a few sub exposures though to clean up the clean up the noise. We'll see. In the meantime, let's see what Wikipedia has to say about it. NGC six five four three.
Cat's Eye Nebula is a planetary nebula in the northern constellation of Draco. It's discovered by William Herschel in 1786. It was the first planetary nebula whose spectrum was investigated by the English amateur astronomer William Huggins, demonstrating that planetary nebulae were gaseous and not stellar in nature. Structurally, the object has had high-resolution images by the Hubble Space Telescope, revealing knots, jets, bubbles, and complex arcs being illuminated by the central hot planetary nebula nucleus. It is a well-studied object that has been observed from radio to X-ray wavelengths. Deep images reveal an extended halo about 300, about five arc minutes across that was once ejected by the central progenitor star during its red giant phase, right? That's what we're trying to see. Got a little bit of a, we definitely see this, this knot of wispiness here, but how much we're going to be able to see of the other stuff, mm, I don't know. Yeah, you can sort of see a little bit of it. I don't know that we're going to see a whole lot, though. Don't know that we're going to see a whole lot of it. It's pretty faint. more we're going to be able to pull out of it. It's a pretty blue color in the star, though. And what else have we got here? Yeah, and then this Minkowski 92. Footprint Nebula. Footprint Nebula. Another one that's... Wow. And a very thick... Must be right on the band of the Milky Way here. Yeah. Yep, right in Cygnus. Which again is real low right now. This one's about 20 degrees, so it's starting to come up. But it's still pretty low for me. Right now, Lyra is definitely up high enough. I 
Actually, you know what? I can see Cygnus. We will go to this next. I can see Cygnus. It is just barely over my roof. So, we'll do that one next in attempt to kill some time for <laughs> our other objects, which are still very low. Did Pat say that he was doing a, a late night one? Okay, somebody said, unfortunately, several days are not in good observing location until 2 a.m., which is way past my bedtime. Most will get better viewing later in the month, and the longest day of the year will be here in a couple weeks. As we have observers scattered around the planet, it's hard to get an optimal view for all of Yeah. Yeah, this probably would have been, this, as it turns out, this would be better to do later in the month. Or even next month, or the month after that. Because most of these things are just too low right now. But. You can just barely start seeing the outline of it here. At nine minutes of sub exposures. almost have to know it's there to know what you're looking at. There's definitely a nice little galaxy over here, though. <clears throat> well, that's why these are the challenge objects difficult of the challenge objects, so not an easy thing to see. It is there, but you, know, you can see it in there, but it's very, very faint. That's more than 10 minutes, that's 11 minutes, so I think we'll move on to the next one. And see if we can find that sucker. Footprint Nebula. Alright. I think I'll be able to see it. It should be over the roof line. Though not by a long stretch. And it'll be in a rich star field, because, yeah, look at all the stars. So this may be interesting to find. And look at you marching across the sky. There we go. Get you to stop. You're not stopping. Hmm. Unfortunately, this movement will create streaking. So we need to make sure things are stopped. Okay, so that looks like it's okay. Now, let's see. Start imaging. Let's see what happens here. <coughs> hmm. All right. In 
Kowski's footprint. Tiny little planetary nebula. It'd be much dimmer than the last one, that's for sure. Well, that last one was pretty bright, so... Oh, yeah. Cat's eye is both bright and dim, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to get it all in one shot, that's true. It's one of those objects that has very bright areas and very dim areas. Where is the mouse? I mean, our box is so bright. Yeah, and again, it looks pretty streaked, so... This looks pretty streaked. I don't know this even. I don't think there's even an image in here of the uh, these stars look streaked. Yeah, they're all mushed. So we're gonna clear this. <coughs> Hopefully get an image with round stars. There we go. That's a lot better. That's a lot sharper and a lot better. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it is between these two stars. be able to pick it out. I Will we be able to pick it out? Well, this clearly is this. This is this. Hmm. I don't know that I'll be able in this incredible mess of stars. I don't know that I'll be able to uh, even pick it out. Find the planetary nebula in this mass of stars. I think it's supposed to be in here somewhere. Somewhere in this area. I don't know that we're going to be able to find it, though. either. And I can see if footprint nebula. I can see if Wikipedia has something, but I'm doubtful. We can give it a shot. Footprint nebula. It's a protoplanetary nebula. It was imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope in the 1990s. The bipolar planetary nebula has a particular form of twin lobes of material. 
Hmm. Well, I'm seeing a picture of it, but... Hmm. Well, I'm seeing a Hubble image of it, but I don't know that I'm seeing it in here. I'm just seeing a bunch of stars in here. I'm seeing a bunch of stars. I don't know that I'm seeing a nebula itself. Even looking at the... Yeah, the star field is awesome, but this is right in the you know this is right in Cygnus, which is right in the arm of the Milky Way. We're looking deep into that right now, so lots of stars here, but quite the challenge to pick out the planetary nebula from it. find it. But it is a pretty cool star field. our field, but uh, I don't think we're going to see much. Well, let's try going higher in the sky. We do have another nice... So, I think we're just going to go off list for a little bit and see if we can't let those other objects rise. And we got some nice things to see up here. 
including a nice glob and another nice planetary nebula that's in Lyra called the Ring Nebula. I think we're just going to do that next because this is uh, this is uh, yeah, there's 56. That's pretty nice. It's a much smaller one than M5, but still a pretty nice one. And 56, another little globular cluster. Just a bright little collection of stars. Again, in a nice rich star field just above Cygnus here. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about Messier 56. about 33,000 light years away, about a third of the distance of the, a third of the width of the Milky Way galaxy away from us. <laughs> it's approximately 84 light years across. It's about 30 one to 32 light years from the galactic center and about 4.8 light years above the galactic plane. This cluster has an estimated age of 13.7 billion years and is following a retrograde orbit through the Milky Way. Properties of this galaxy and this cluster indicate that it may have been acquired during the merger of a dwarf galaxy, of which Omega Centauri forms the surviving nucleus. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Part of the dwarf galaxy. Omega Centauri is the rest of it. Or so the theory goes. The theory with globular clusters is that most, if not all of them, are captured galaxies. Galaxies of the Milky Way captured at one point. This cute little glob.
But as with all globs, it doesn't take very long to see the whole thing and see what you're looking at. So now let's go up from M56 to M57, the Ring Nebula. Uh, that's a nice one. <clears throat> it's small but bright. Yeah, see? Nice little ring right in there. In fact, we're not going to want to do... We're not going to want to do much in the way of uh, exposure time on this either. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Let's try seven and a half seconds to see what we get. see if we can resolve the central star tonight. Can't always. Because of our cool weather pattern this week, its transparency is a little bit low. Sky is a little bit mushy, so we might not be able to resolve it, but there is a central star in here. Well, getting a dot in there. There is a central star in there. Other than that, it's just a nice little ring-shaped planetary nebula. This one is very frequently observed by amateur astronomers because it's so bright and it's so easy to spot right in the outer leg of Lyra, which was highlighted by Vega, which is one of the brightest stars in our night sky. Actually, what this is looking like right now is that it's out of focus. It's possible we've got to adjust the focus. It is a little cool tonight, so it's possible the focus has shifted slightly. But you can see it's a bright, intense little planetary nebula. Yeah, because these stars don't look really sharp. They look just kind of fuzzy. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Appreciate you stopping by. Sleep well. I'm going to be kind of winging it for the rest of the night anyway, because most of this stuff is just too low until real late at night, later than I'm going to want to be up. So... I may be winging it here or just calling it an early night, one of the two. We'll see. But thanks for coming. I appreciate it. see what else can we look at. All that stuff's too low. Well, we've definitely got M13 is here. That's always a nice one. The biggest, brightest glob in the night sky. Nice. 
two, and this one will be M13. Big bright star cluster. In the meantime, I want to try and refocus. I don't want to try and refocus and get ring better. And it just so happens we have a nice bright star right nearby in the form of Vega that we can go to. So why don't we do that? Let's go over to Vega. And check our focus. So I'll put the Batnov mask on and check the focus. Yeah, I can tell already that it's out. So, we'll check our focus here. So, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Yeah, it definitely was out a little bit. So, that was good. It's nice having a very bright star nearby. You got nice, sharp diffraction spikes. Alright, let's make sure you are settled. No, you keep marching across the screen, so... Okay, that looks pretty good. Alright, so now we're going to start imaging again. And again, we're going to drop it down to... ...much shorter number. See where we're at. Doink. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, that's too much. But see, you can see right now things are much sharper, and we have a central star right in the middle of it, which is what we want. This is much clearer. Much clearer! Yeah, you can see the, the ring is much sharper, and you can very clearly see the central star now. So that was an effort well, well worth it. In fact, while this is going, I'm going to go... 
I might just hang with this for a minute. Probably go get another layer on here in a minute because one extra layer is not enough tonight. There's not, the exposures are so short, there's not enough of the histogram curve to. do a color balance on, so. Four seconds here? Yeah, three and three quarter seconds. It's pretty nice uh, exposure for this. It's another object that has some really bright parts and some really dim parts. And it's hard in one exposure to get things right. This is mostly bright, so it's mostly short exposure is, does well. But The dim core and central star is often hard to get. But I think this did pretty good. Get a little more red out of this. A little more red in that ring. <laughs> This is a sweet little planetary nebula. That is a big, spectacular globular cluster. But M13 is, uh, well, I'm sorry, uh, M57 is it's a nice little ring. And if I get more aggressive on the stack, I think I'll just blow it out. Yeah, it just makes the 
Just makes, makes the Central Star harder to see. Better off leaving it low, leaving it mellow. Works out pretty well. <clears throat> cool, well, that's fun. All right. Let's put this back out. Ring just a tiny as well. If you look at it through a, a telescope, it actually just kind of looks like a f fat, fuzzy star through binoculars or low powered scope. It just looks like a fat, fuzzy star. You know, you can't even resolve the ring very well. But uh, let's start with 92. We'll do two, two globs. Ninety-two is a pretty nice one. Yeah, see, not a nice globular cluster. I don't even need a stack on this. And it does help smooth things out a little bit, but it's just a great little glob. Start imaging. Finished. Drop it to one, two. One, two, three, four. And I'll clear it. I'm not sure if it didn't cut a longer one or not. Here we can play with the histogram to either make it dimmer and resolve more of the core stars, see more of the core by making it dimmer, getting it less blown out. More and more of the core you can see, the dimmer you make it. But then you lose the outer periphery stars, or you go the other way and blow the whole core out, but then you see the outer stars a little better. <laughs> so, kind of get to take your pick. Somewhere in the middle, probably about the best, but oh well. Globula clusters. Now, if we go to M13, let me clear this out. Again, much bigger, brighter one. And again, we have our choice of getting more of the core resolved or getting the outer stuff resolved. This is just, you can see the size of this. It's just a big, bright, spectacular globular cluster.
Well, obviously my mic was muted there, and I for forgot it was muted. Anyway, we're doing M97 the Owl Nebula and M108 Galaxy. And so what I was just saying was this here is about 2,000 light years away, and this is 46 million light years away. It's its own entire galaxy, so... Whereas the Planetary Nebula is just a star in our own galaxy. So all the stars you see here in the view are in the foreground. There are all stars in our galaxy. And this is 46 million light years away across huge open empty tracts of space to get to this, which is a galaxy out here. we'll be able to see the nice little owl eyes shape in here. May have to increase the stretch a bit to do it. But we can do that. It's called the surfboard. I think it might be called. Yeah, the surfboard. Yeah, what it is. Definitely got that shape. <laughs>
definitely a pretty blue green nebula though that planetary zoom in so it gets all fuzzy but you can see the central star in it This one you can see. Surfboard it just gets mushy. are 10 minutes. Coolies. So let's the star right between them. And that way I'll just get them both. See if we can't grab them both here. Mm. Hmm. I think it's going to be over here. Let's cruise around and see if we can't bring the other one in. Yeah, there it is. I thought so. And the orientation of the cameras. About right. Alright. Good. I'm going to bring you up a little bit. Just a little bit more. Yeah, that's probably going to be about right. That's probably going to do about right. M81 and M82. Couple of nice looking galaxies here. See where M27 is by about now. How high are you now? Dang, you're still way too low. You're still barely over 10 degrees. It's gonna be a lot of time before you're up anywhere that I can I can see you. And I'm 16 and 17 are also still going to be too low. So I don't know that we're going to be able to do any more of the of the challenge because this stuff is just way too low. It's much better in uh, let's see. There's 17. There's 16, and they're still both below 10 degrees. You know, around midnight or well, actually no, one or two a.m. they'll be good. But 
for the time being, no. It's just not going to happen. You know, I try to stay, I try to stay over 20 degrees at a minimum, 30 ideally. And uh, right now it's just, I mean, even on four in here would be a challenge. Ah, I bet you guys are coming in nice. Yeah. <laughs> Photo bombed, of course, by a satellite. But these are two nice bright galaxies. There's a, there's a lot of spectacular stuff to see in this part of the sky later in the summer. Right now this stuff is still late rising. But as we get into late summer and even fall, this stuff will be just wonderful to look at. For the time being. <coughs> Not so much. I think I'm going to go grab another layer, so I'll be back. Okay, that's a little warmer. It looks like my internet's up and down again. Go figure.
And while those are loading, let's see what else have we got to get here. Southern Sky has a lot of nice stuff in it, but. Arcturus. There's big bright star. <coughs> hmm. Uh, still pretty low. What is this? Hmm. No. Nothing of any import there, and we've certainly spent a lot of time in this area of the sky this last few months. Mars is too low. certainly done a lot of galaxies lately, so I don't want to jump on more galaxies. Unfortunately, the other stuff he's got in here is uh, Definitely got some really nice stuff showing up here soon in the southern sky. We've got some really nice stuff showing up down here. This is, well, this, it's the center of our galaxies right here. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that's going to be coming up in the next few months. Some of which he pointed out in his. Uh, in this month's challenge, but the problem is most of the stuff in the challenge is, is just rises really late. So probably just gonna end up calling it a night here. <clears throat> Definitely finished off with some nice stuff. All the rest of the stuff that he has in this challenge is just too low to the horizon until really late night. So I think I'm just going to call it a night. So thanks, folks, for being here. And uh, hope you.
hope you had fun. I know I did. I think we got pretty much, well, everything that we could that wasn't too low. I mean, these are, these are some really nice things that we can do here next month and month after that. Oh, see, this one was also too low. I see 1470. Didn't I? Did I check? I think I did. I see 1470. I see. Yeah, see, I did. Where is it at? Yeah, see, it's it's still just barely over 10 degrees. It's over Cassiopeia, which is there. That's awful darn low. It will be very low to be over there. Um, you know, I think I can get there. Uh, let's try it. <laughs> I don't know if the scope will go there or not. It's, uh, it's in kind of a tough spot this low in the north. This low to the north is really in a kind of a tough spot. But there's M81 and M82. Let's see if we can get to this other one. Let's see if we can get to this other one. Let's see where it goes. That's interesting. Never heard my scope make those noises before. Just gotta make sure my cabling is uh, not gonna run into problems. Wow, that's really a wild orientation. Wow, I've never seen my scope do that before. That's wild. <laughs> All right, well. Let's see what we can see here. Wonder if I'm Huh. Let's see if I can see any of these star patterns in here. There's two stars close together, which could be these two. The colors are right. Yeah, it could be in here. Let's try doing a plate solve, just for the heck of it. I haven't done, tried doing a plate solve in a while. Let's kick it up to four seconds and do a, do a plate solve. <clears throat> oh, two tenths of a degree, not too bad. All right, let's see if we can see it. I see 1470. So let's see what Pat has to say about it. Pearl on Tongue Nebula. Also designated as SH2. There's a small emission nebula in the constellation Cepheus. A distance of about 16,000 light years. Cat's eye we did. Footprint Nebula is couldn't find it. <laughs> I couldn't see it. Uh, yeah, so this is what it's supposedly going to look like. And we'll see what we can see here in a second.
doink. Yeah, you know what? I think that might be it right there. Let's get our histogram adjusted correctly. And get our color balance adjusted correctly, because it's wackadoodle. Yeah, I think that might be it. Yeah, I think this might be it right here. Oh, let's, let's see what a few more sub-exposures will do. It's very small, that's for sure. We'll give it a couple of sub more sub exposures and see what we get. Might not get much. Does look like the right coloring though. Nice star field again. Definitely does look like his his thing, but looks like we might have to uh oh get a bit less aggressive on the stretch in order to see anything. Yeah, see. Now we're starting to get it again. Yeah, pearl on the tongue. Yep, yeah, looks like you just have to get less aggressive with the stretch so it's less blown out. Which looks a lot like his picture now. Just again, inverted. He's got his actually a little even a little darker. Yeah. interesting. Oh, did I miss any other ones? No, I got that. The footprint nebula we couldn't find. Swan and eagle are too low. 64 we got. 27 is too low. And M3 we got. 
So we've got all of those. So this is the last one. So it's the last one. camera now. It's about as good as it gets. I see fourteen seventy. See if you have anything to say about that. Is there an NGC number on it? No. I see. There's 10 minutes. Pearl on tongue. Interesting. Well, that's all the objects for tonight. Thank you everyone for being here. And uh, uh, this probably will be my last broadcast actually for, for this uh, Dark of the Moon. Because the new moon was, well actually it was tonight. Tomorrow night I will not be doing a live stream. Um, for those of you on cloudy nights, uh, Saturday night will be our um, gathering, online gathering, so I'll be doing that uh, on Saturday night. And then uh, probably by Sunday night the moon will be 
full enough that I won't want to do another one. I don't like doing streams two nights in a row anyway, unless there's something really special going on. So, And that will be pretty much it for this Dark of the Moon. So it'll be back into the back into moon time, as it were. And uh, so probably won't see you again for another couple of weeks. But thanks, uh, everyone, for being here. And uh, have a great evening. I will see you next time. Good night. <laughs>